Today we're taking a deep look at my personal bike, my Banshee Paradox V3. I'm gonna go through all the components, tell you what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and make some big changes to this thing. So this is my personal bike. You don't get to see it on the channel very much because I've had so many bikes coming in for review lately. That's a good thing. It's my goal to review and ride every modern hardtail on the planet so that I can give appropriate advice to people who are looking for different bikes. And because I'm curious, it's amazing how different different hardtails ride back to back. I love this little Banshee Paradox. It's aluminum. It's got some interesting things. They've, they've left hollow a few places in the seat stay bridge, in the dropouts, in the chain stay yoke that allow it to flex a little bit more. And it still doesn't feel as soft as my Stanton Sherpa Steel but it does take away a lot of the chatter, especially at high speeds when you're riding hard, compared to most other aluminum frames. My wife has watched as I've ridden on this and bounced on the pedals, she can watch the rear end flex, and she said, holy cow, I can actually see what you're feeling. Pretty cool. I've repainted this to make it unique, um, and I'm gonna repaint it again because I love this bike so much I just wanna change it up, make it a little bit fresh. Let me walk you through the parts that are on it right now. I'm running 2.3 tires front and rear. These are 29ers. I run the Specialized Ground Control Rear. That's my favorite rear tire, except for the Maxxis Dissector, but the Maxxis Dissector wears out really fast. So these last about five times as long and are very, very similar, a little bit faster rolling. I'm running a Specialized Eliminator 2.3 front, the T7 compound, and I really like that up front as a trail tire. It rolls quick but it also has plenty of grip in the corners. And I actually feel like I can go anywhere and ride this tire well. I'm running Zip 30 Moto wheels, which I love. One thing I don't love about the stock Zip 30 Motos is the rear hub has poor engagement. And for the price that they charge, you'd think they'd have better engagement, but they don't. But I like the rims and the wheel feels so much that I ordered an Onyx Vesper to lace on it. I got one of the early Onyx Vespers and it's having issues. Again, this is the second time. I've had it warrantied once and now I'm going to have to warranty it again. And personally, I'm only going to run the Onyx Classics from now on. I understand the early Vespers had some problems. The new ones aren't supposed to have these problems. But I've lost faith and patience in the Vespers. Plus when I'm pedal kicking on this, like doing a trials hop and kicking to spring it forward, it slips, it rotates about a quarter turn. That's not supposed to happen. I have an Onyx Classic I've had for seven years with thousands of miles on it with zero issues. These rims are super unique. They're not the lightest wheels on the planet, even though they're carbon. They are extremely durable. They have what they call ankle compliance where the spoke comes in and the, the rim is actually meant to pivot on the spoke, so when it hits a rock, it deflects instead of taking that jarring impact. Now, if you're racing dual slalom and like putting really high G out corners, you're gonna feel the wheels flex. I don't do that on my hardtail, and so for everyday trail riding, I really like the ankle compliance, and it helps uh, soften the trail and help me stay in control a little bit better as well. This paint's all beat up. This bike is chipped. Um, the paint's chipped. I've been hard on this bike. I've ridden it very, very hard. Many, many dismounts where it slides into the rocks trying to climb bottoms up. And I'm going to be stripping the paint off today and repainting it in a similar style, but I've got some extra cool trips up my sleeve. Definitely inspired by Squid Bikes and their awesome paint jobs. They're just bikes and I love making them unique. And there's too many black on black on black bikes or bikes where you just get red nipples and red pedals and a red stem and red grips and then everything matches. So I'm gonna to try to make this bike even more unique. Up front, I'm running a 130 mil Cane Creek Helm. This is my all time favorite fork. Nothing feels like a helm. And I use the Helm Air. I don't personally love coil forks on hardtails. I feel like uh, they don't quite have the support I need and a soft front doesn't match a hard uh, tail. So I'm actually okay with my fork being a little bit stiffer, a little bit less plush to match the, the less plush ride of a hardtail in the back. So yeah, I set these up at 130. I like that they have a separate adjustable negative air chamber so I can fine tune the positive and negative air chamber pressures. I'll do a whole nother video about that later. The helm is a little bit heavy. The axle that they use is way too heavy. They need to find a better option for that but the Helm Mark II did improve a lot of things I didn't like about the Mark I. 
but the feel of these forks is phenomenal. It just feels buttery off the top, very supportive, and then I've never had a harsh bottom out with these. It sounds cliche, but that's exactly how it feels to me. And it's a stiff chassis, and it holds up to hard, hard charging. Now, if I was building this as an XC bike or a really light trail bike, I'd run a Stepcast 34 at 120 mil. That's my favorite uber light fork for super light builds, but you can't ride that fork as hard as you can ride this fork. And this bike can run 120 to 150 mil travel. I love it as a 130. It's a little bit under forked, but as a trail bike and as an all rounder, it's fantastic. The Banshee Paradox has a long reach. This bike, you have to push 7 tenths to 10 tenths to make the rear end smooth. It's not flexy enough to where you just are riding down a washboard and it's gonna take that out. If you're charging down a washboard, it is gonna take out some of that sting, but you have to be riding it fairly hard to make that flex. This bike has a super low bottom bracket and that's why I don't recommend it as a 27.5 or even a 27.5 plus. I love these five dev cranks, they're beautiful. Sadly, I've hit them on a few rocks because that's what we do here is we climb up rocks and sometimes I'm pedaling when I get up those rocks and they've held up just fine. They've got a couple scratches on them, but I believe bike components are meant to be used. These are 165 mil, and I'm using an absolute black oval chainring, a 32 tooth chainring on this, which feels wonderful. And this is the bike that I can take anywhere. And when we go on a road trip, and I don't know if we're gonna ride double black diamonds or if we're gonna ride green trails for 40 miles, this is the bike I take, because it can do it all but it does reward a modern riding technique. A few of my patrons that I've worked with, I've consulted with them and they were excited about this bike. I thought it was a great fit for them. I recommended it for them and they came back a month later and said, it's just too long. I can't get used to the new riding position. It doesn't work for me. So this is a pretty aggressive bike. The reach is pretty long, especially in a size medium. And then as you go bigger, it gets long as well. So I don't know, longer, slacker, more aggressive, isn't always better for everybody. But with it under forked, I still feel like it's not steep. And this has such a tall stack. That's one of my favorite things about this bike. It has such a tall stack that under forking it does not pull away from it, especially running my 35 mil rise bars here. So bars are a little bit higher rise, compensate for that under forking. Seat angle is really steep, like I like it. One thing I would change, if I could fit a 175 dropper in here, it would be a game changer. Having the bike body separation, being able to move the bike underneath you is super important to me and getting the seat out of the way is a big part of that. A lot of people think, oh, you're short, you don't need that much drop. Us shorties that are running 29ers, we need all the drop we can get. So the more the seat is out of the way, the more we can move around on a bike that's probably a tad big for us anyway. I'm running my MicroShift Advent X on here. I run that on all my bikes. It's a one by 10, 10 speed drivetrain. And a lot of new riders think, well, why aren't you running one by 11 or one by 12? Obviously 12 is better than 10 because 12 is more. Let me tell you, Advent X 10 speed is just fine. It's, it's got like 98% the range of a 12 speed. The gaps between the gears are perfect for me. It's very economical. I really like it. The one downside to Advent X is the derailers are not quite as robust as some others. So if you often hit your derailleur on things, it might not be for you. You're probably gonna be replacing derailleurs a little bit faster, but then again, it's a third the cost of other drivetrains. So when a whole new derailleur is 60, 65 bucks, it still might be cheaper to replace three of these derailleurs than one of the others. Anyway, I'm a huge fan. The shifter's like 30 bucks. Uh, the cassettes are really cheap. I've got these cassettes on all my wheels and it just makes it real easy for me to swap from bike to bike. And I think an inexpensive drivetrain is one of the best places to save money. I prefer SRAM GX, X01, and XX1, but it's only five or 10% better than this at maybe 300% the cost. So it's a no brainer for me. I'd rather get a cheaper drivetrain that may not be as bling that, you know, I'm not impressing people because it's not wireless or it doesn't say SRAM or it doesn't say Shimano on it. I don't care because I can put more money into something like a fork. Uh, for the brakes, I'm running TRP Slate T4s. They sent me these to review them. I have a review of them. I like them. Um, I don't love them. I'm running Ergon GA2 grips on here that I like. So I'm going to strip it down to the frame, remove all the paint, repaint it, and rebuild it up with a couple tweaks to make it the sexy bike that uh, it deserves to be because this is really a truly special bike.
A lot of people ask me what size stem I ride, and it depends on my bike. Right now on this, I'm liking a 40 mil stem. I've run a 50 mil stem before on it. I've run a 30 mil stem. I don't like 30 mil stems. That's way too short for me, and it changes how the bike steers, but 40 works really well for me on this bike. On other bikes, I've got 50s, 60s. All right, I'm gonna take this thing outside. I don't have a sandblaster, so I'm just gonna wire wheel this, which might be a stupid idea for aluminum. This thing looks cool, totally raw. I got my makeshift paint booth here. I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer. I'm gonna do white so that the color underneath pops. This is Bare Paint and Primer Premium Plus that I had tinted at Home Depot. It's like $14 for this can and I can get it any color when you grab those color samples on the wall and they can tint it for that. So I'm really interested in that. It's latex paint, which means it thins with water. It's got real easy cleanup, but sometimes latex does weird things when you mix it with oil-based. I've got an oil-based Rust-Oleum primer on. I'm gonna use this for my color and then we'll see what happens. All right, that turned out cool. Uh, we're gonna get a little experimental here. All right, we're going for a marble effect. And turned out pretty cool though. It's got the effect I wanted it to. Now it's one of the most stressful parts of the build is the soap. I'm going to use dish soap to mask this thing and it's so hard to get right. I'm going to try using an infant uh, medicine dispenser, see if I can control it a little more. This is Montana Colors 94 Purple from Ace. Now it's time to rinse it off. Oh, it's so nervous putting water over brand new paint, but you gotta do it to get the soap off. All right, so the color schemes actually turned out awesome but I didn't drip very well. It looks too predictable, so I'm going to uh, put soap on it again and then change the color. I might be destroying it or I might be making it way better. Yeah, it just looks a little too calculated. The drip needs to be a little more random. Well, that's not subtle at all. <laughs> Looks like Eddie Van Halen had a little too much 90s. So the hardest part about these is quitting when you're ahead. <laughs> and I don't know when to quit. I'm gonna do one more soap and then hit it with one more color. turned out great. I actually really like it. I've got a cool trip coming up and I need to get this built up so that it's ready for that trip. So we're going to put some really cool parts on this. This is my favorite dropper. It is the 9.8 Fall Line R. It's got some really cool features. It's very light. Uh, it runs low pressure and it uses a brake in there and it's got a different piston inside of it than most droppers. It also has the housing thread into the cable. So if you need to raise your dropper, it pulls the housing with it. 
You should always grease your seat post. I've had a few people saying, hey, my seat post is bound. I put a aluminum seat post in a steel frame. You should tell people that they should grease it. You should grease your seat post. We're running my favorite bottom bracket. It's a wheels manufacturing angular contact bottom bracket. We're running a 30 mil spindle crank on this. I've been running this same exact bottom bracket for three years now with zero issues. And if you ever do have an issue, you can just replace the bearings if you want. You can buy the shells. You can buy each piece separately, which I think is so cool. It means you don't have to A, pay for an entirely new bottom bracket when you do it, and B, it's less waste. So way to go, wheels manufacturing. And these are made in the U.S. I'm always a fan of supporting made in the U.S. products when we can. For cranks, I'm running these incredible 5-dev cranks. They're aluminum. I'm running 165 mil length. Uh, they're lightweight, they're gorgeous, they are such a conversation piece, and they just make your bike pop. I think they're incredible. They're made in the U.S. I have a 5% discount code for you guys in the description below if you're interested in some sweet American-made cranks out of a single chunk of aluminum. And I'm running the Absolute Black Oval Chainring. I'm running a 32 tooth. It makes it a little bit easier for me to pedal. So the shorter cranks along with the oval chainring, my body definitely feels the difference. When I hop on this bike coming off my other bikes, Immediately, the first thing, two pedals in, I'm just like, ah, oh, this is relaxing. It's not stressing my body. So yeah, stay tuned to hear more from 5Dev. They're doing some other amazing stuff, and uh, you'll see it here on the channel. I Beautiful piece of art. We have some very special brakes going on this. These are my favorite brakes, the Paul Clampers. They're cable-actuated disc brakes. And I know what you're thinking. Cable-actuated disc brakes, those suck. Most do. These are in a totally different ball game. Check these out. These are absolutely gorgeous. Woo wee! Polished aluminum. Absolutely beautiful. Goes well with those cranks. Oh, this Paul stuff is made in America and the quality is absolutely top notch. A lot of people love to hate on these that have never tried them. They are fantastic. We're putting on my Zip 30 Moto. All right, we got two options for bars and stem. One up carbon, these weigh 115 grams lighter than the Roost tie stem and bars, but the Roost tie bars feel fantastic and damp, even a little more than these one ups, which damp really well. But this Banshee Paradox frame is especially stiff in the head tube area, and I feel that more than any other bike. So I think I'm going to try the tie bars, and uh, despite the slight weight penalty. And of course, we're running the Cane Creek Helm Mark II, my favorite fork. Woo! That is hot. For grips, there's only one choice, the Ergon GD1s. My all-time favorite grips. So not only do we have polished clampers, we have polished Paul Canty levers. <laughs> these are incredible. Part of what makes me love these brakes so much is the lever. Nothing feels like this. It is the best feeling lever I've ever ridden. Ever. So we're running the Paul Canty levers, which are a short pull lever with Paul short pull clampers. A lot of people get confused if we should run short pull or long pull for mountain bike. Run short pull and run the candy levers. That's the way to do it. Here she is all built up, all complete. This is just a reminder that you don't always need to buy a new bike to have fun on it and to reconnect with it. Just do little tiny things, tune it up, rebuild the fork, um, maybe paint it, make it your own and you can fall in love with that bike all over again. You guys know what time it is. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. <laughs>